typical patients who develop uh, candidemia, so bloodstream infections due to candida, receive an antifungal drug. And the first line therapy for antifungal, um, excuse me, the first line therapy for candida and candidemia are the echinocandin class of drugs. And we still feel like that is the right and appropriate therapy. The problem is we're now seeing some of these um, um, species, some of these isolates, some of these patients with the candida infections due to candida auris develop resistance to that class of antifungals, in which case you can still use the other, one of the other two classes if they are susceptible, but as I mentioned, if they do develop triple resistance, that's where we're, we're, we're very concerned. That's been exceedingly rare. So, so far, if you're, if you pick the right drug, and you're able to get that drug on board, you can still treat these patients. But I'm very concerned for the development of multi-drug resistance in these organisms. I think that one of the things that's sort of exciting right now in the antifungal world is there do appear to be several drugs in the pipeline that have different mechanisms of action or that have extended spectrum mechanisms of action that are going to potentially be available for people to use. Um, that we haven't really had a new antifungal drug in many years, in fact maybe in a couple decades. And so it's exciting to see that there is a pipeline and I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful and I really hope that, that work continues rapidly to get these drugs into human trials and to find out how well they will work against fungal infections. And specifically for Candida auris, we really need to be thinking about when and if we get that triple resistant organism, how are we going to treat it?